While surveying the site of some ancient ruins, two young archaeologists, Derek and Margot, and their nomad friend, Moki, find themselves trapped and sinking in a whirling pool of sand. And when the dust settles, they stare up in awe at a vast chamber filled with giant relics and artifacts from another civilization. And there, at the far end of the cavern, a door with a strange inscription. All who enter these portals pass through time. beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God separated the light from the darkness and called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening, and there was morning, the first day. On the second day, God said, let the waters separate and form a space, a sky above and oceans below. and let that space be called heaven. On the third day, God said, let the waters be gathered into one place and let dry land appear. He saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass and seed-bearing plants. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation. saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning, the third day. And on the fourth day, God made the stars. And he made the sun and the moon to divide day from night and to mark the seasons and the years. And God 
saw that it was good. So on the fifth day, God said, let the waters bring forth living creatures. And there were great sea creatures and sea animals of all forms and shapes. To fly in the skies above, God created every kind of bird. God saw that it was good. And on the sixth day, God made every kind of animal. The beasts of the field. and everything that creeps upon the earth. and said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. And so, from the dust of the ground, God formed man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul. And God made him master of all upon the earth. And on the seventh day, God rested. And he blessed that day and made it holy. planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, the man called Adam. And God told Adam to tend and care for the garden of Eden, and to eat freely of the fruit of its trees. All but one tree, this one, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God warned Adam that eating the fruit of this tree would make him know right and wrong, good and evil and he would be doomed to die. You there! Oh, these apples look good. Well, they should. I've grown these apples myself. Nothing but the best in my orchard. But maybe they're sour. Sour? My apples? Well, they're the sweetest apples in Nod. Who says? Here, try one. Well, am I not right? Sour. Sour? Impossible. Let's settle this, Margot and Derek. Are these apples sour or not? Delicious. Mmm, the best apple I ever ate. <laughs> ah, you see, what did I tell you? Well, I've got to admit, I was wrong and you were right. <laughs> I guess I showed him.
We really shouldn't have done that. I know. But we were so hungry. Well, where do you think we are? Where? We don't even know when we are. You are never lost if you have friends. Shall we be their friends and let them join us? Sure. Oh, yes. Why not? Only if they sit quiet and you get right back to the story. Well, I was telling you about the creation. We're in a land the Bible calls Nod, just east of Eden. Eden? You mean like in the Garden of Eden? Exactly so. Look at the four rivers. The Pishon, the Gihon, the Tigris, and the Euphrates. So, what does that mean? According to the Bible, that one large river watered the Garden of Eden. The real Garden of Eden? The place where... The place of creation. But, but I thought that was just a story. No, he was telling us the real story. Stop talking and listen. Oh, I'm sorry. Please, go on. You were just at the part where God had finished his work on the sixth day? And now he's taking the day off because he worked so hard creating men. And what about woman? Yes, what about us? I was just coming to that. God not only asked Adam to tend the Garden of Eden, but to give names to all the birds and animals there. Whatever Adam called them, that's what their names became. You're so beautiful and graceful. You're... You're a swan. You... You are a deer. And you're a horse. You... What can I call you? Uh... Uh... Ostrich. That's you, all right. This isn't easy. <sighs> Large mouth bass, a small mouth bass, and a rainbow trout. <laughs> and you're a rabbit? And you're a fox. No, the other way around would be better. You're the fox and you're the rabbit. You're a cat. And your singing friend there is a canary. No, 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 hold it. No cats are no friends with no canaries, that's for sure. Back then they were, young man. How things changed is the story you're going to hear. All the creatures in the Garden of Eden were at peace. With themselves and with Adam. Except one. And this one was the craftiest and most hate-filled of all God's creatures. The serpent. No, please, no. no! Don't tell me anything about snakes or serpents. They scare me. I hate them more than anything. <laughs> Many people feel the same way, Moki. Listen, and you'll find out why. While the serpent secretly observed Adam in the garden, God was watching him, too. You all have someone to be with, one of your own kind. Adam had named all the animals and all the birds, but he had no companion, no one to help him. So God caused him to go into a deep sleep. ribs, leaving no mark behind. And from the rib which God had taken from man, he made a woman. I am 
here to be with you. Now, at last, from my bones and my flesh, she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. And so it is that a man will leave his own father and mother and be united to his wife. the animals, they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. <laughs> All was innocence, and their Garden of Eden was paradise. Look at all that beautiful fruit. I think I'll try some. No, Eve, no! What's the matter? God forgive me. What is it, Adam? What have you done? It's not what I've done, it's what I haven't done. I haven't told you about this tree and its fruit. God made only one rule for us in this garden. We are never to eat any fruit from this tree. This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And if we disobey God and eat from it, we will die. Die? What? What does that mean? What does it mean to die? It means an end. An end to all we have here, everything. An end to this perfection. That is the tree of life. Its fruit gives us eternal life. We may eat from it and live forever, but we may not eat from this tree over here. If that is God's rule, we must accept it. Yes. It's too bad, though. The fruit really does look delicious. Yes, it does. I know it does. Yes. Yes. The fruit of this tree is delicious. <laughs> no, please, no more about creepy, crawly, slimy snakes. But this one can talk. Oh, that's the worst kind. Oh, it looks like rain. Yes, let's move on to the awning at my father's place. Father, have you seen Khalif? Seth, I told you. Khalif is your snake. He's your responsibility, not mine. Khalif, where are you? Oh, I hope he hasn't run off. Khalif! If you see him, I'll be with the storyteller. Here, father storyteller and your friends. Oh, thank you, father. Oh, I hate snakes. So, what else would my son have for a pet? <laughs> Thank your father for us all, Seth. He is a generous man. <laughs> and his apples are the best ever. Well, I'm glad you're happy, Moki. Because now I'm afraid we have to return to the crafty serpent. Oh, no, you know I don't like snakes. Yes, Moki. Adam and Eve and the most famous or infamous serpent in history. Oh! I'm sorry if I startled you. Um, where's Adam? He's, uh, tending to the olive trees. Oh. Oh, but all your pretty fruit is bruised now. Come. I'll show you the sweetest delight in the garden as a surprise for Adam. Really? Come. All right. Here. Yeah. But this is the one tree in the garden we cannot touch. This is the forbidden fruit. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Surely not. We may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, except for the tree in the middle of the garden. God has forbidden us to either touch or eat the fruit of that tree, for if we do, we shall die. You believe that nonsense? <laughs> of course you will not die. God knows that as soon as you eat it, your eyes will be opened, and you and Adam will be like gods yourselves. You will know good 
and evil. <gasps> the fruit here is truly beautiful. Oh, yes. It is. Hello, little friend. Come, let's go find Eve. Go ahead. Taste it. Find out for yourself. But Adam... ...will be pleased. You will make him wise. A god. And you will become his goddess. See? You touched it, and nothing happened. No. Taste it. will be so pleased. I will. About what? About this. Take a bite. You'll love it. Well, it looks good. Yes. Now, for the first time, all was not perfect in paradise. Something's not right. I feel... I feel... Yes. I feel strange. Naked. Yes. So do I. The fruit. We ate the forbidden fruit. Quick. We must hide ourselves. But as the day grew toward evening, they heard the sound of God moving through the garden. Adam and Eve hid afraid for what they had done. And from that moment forward, man has known good and evil. Adam and Eve made simple clothes for themselves from the fig leaves in the garden. So, what happens next? Go on. Oh, I can hardly wait. <laughs> Khalif! You found my pet snake, Moki. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, oh you're welcome. <laughs> As I was saying, God called to Adam and Eve. Adam. Adam, where are you? I heard your voice, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the forbidden tree? The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Woman, what is this you have done? The serpent, the serpent tricked me and I ate. Serpent! You are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. On your belly, you fool. And dust shall you eat all the days of your life. The woman shall be your enemy, and her children the enemy of your children. Go, Adam. Go, Eve. Out of the Garden of Eden. Out of this garden forever. All your lives you will work the soil for your food, and you shall gain your food by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. So God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. You know what I think? What? God showed us paradise, so we could see what we'd lose if we disobeyed him. Then it's because of Adam and Eve we all know right from wrong. And we know we'll have to work and sweat for whatever we get. Just like me. I tended the orchards myself and harvested them, too. Would you like some? Uh, there wouldn't be a s serpent with you, would there? No, oh, I hate snakes, too. Here, take these for your trip. My son says you have a long way to go. Believe me, you have no idea. 
Why can't we go back to the garden again? Yes, why don't we just go out and find the garden ourselves? None of us will ever return to the Garden of Eden. God's flaming sword. It was sent to block the entrance to the Garden of Eden forever. And God said, man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now he will never be able to reach out and take from the tree of life, and he will not live forever. But Genesis, from which this story has been told, means the beginning, not the end. And for all of mankind, for all the ages, this was just the beginning.